Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some sample content from our upcoming Anarsi course. That's for Cisco exam 300-410. Specifically, we're gonna be considering a feature of the EIGRP routing protocol that lets EIGRP load balance across unequal cost paths. And that feature is the variance feature. And if you like this video, please do me a favor and click the like button down below and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Doing those two things really does help out this channel. Now, let's take a look at how to configure EIGRP's variance feature. In this video, we want to take a look at an EIGRP feature that's unique among routing protocols. OSPF cannot do this. It's called the variance feature. The idea is EIGRP has the ability to load balance across unequal cost paths, different routes that have different metrics. That way we get some load balancing. For example, in this case, R1 can get down to that server which is on network 198.51.100.0/24, it can get there two different ways. It can get there via BB1 or it can get there via BB2. And currently, we have an equal metric for each path. Let's confirm that. Let's do a show IP route command and we see that EIGRP is load balancing across both paths. And the reason is the metric of each path is 3072. This path is via BB2, and this path is via BB1. Now, OSPF can do that as well. However, what if the metric was higher between R1 and BB1? Let's make that number higher than 3072 and see if we can still load balance across those unequal cost paths. That's where the variance feature comes in, and it can do that for us. To make that happen, let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 2, and I'm going to artificially increase the delay associated with that interface, remembering that EIGRP by default examines bandwidth and delay to calculate its metric. And the default delay for a gig interface is 10 microseconds. Let's increase that. I'm going to say that the delay is 20 microseconds. To do that, I give the command delay and you can see from context sensitive help that the unit of measure is in tens of microseconds. So I'll say delay two. Now, if I take a look at our IP routing table, let's do a show IP route. You'll see that there's only one path to get to this 198.51.100.0/24 network, and it's via 203.0.113.5. That's BB2. We're no longer load balancing between BB1 and BB2. We can see why by taking a look at the EIGRP topology table. Let's do a show IP EIGRP topology command. And we see that even though we're only using one path to get down to that server, EIGRP knows about two different paths. It knows the path via BB2 and via BB1. But notice the metrics are different. Since I increased that delay, the route via BB1 has a higher metric of 3,328. That's higher than 3,072, and that's the reason only this route via BB2 is being injected into the IP routing table. Let's use the variance option to use both routes. And here's the way that variance option works. We're going to go into router configuration mode for EIGRP. We'll say variance, and we're going to give an integer. Now, that integer is a multiplier. We're going to say, let's take the feasible distance. In other words, 3072 of our successor route. That's our preferred route. Let's multiply that by 2, and that would give us 6,104. Now we have a range of values, a range of metric values across which we can load balance. So if the metric via another route is 6,144 or lower, it could be equal to or less than, then we can load balance across those paths. Let's make that happen. Let's go into router configuration mode for EIGRP Autonomous System 1, and I'm going to say variance, and I'm going to give a multiplier of 2. Because after all, 2 times 3,072, we said that was 6,144. Yeah, that other metric via BB1, it's in that range. It's 3,328. That's well under 6,144. So this should work. Let's do a show IP route. And look at this. Now, even though the metric values are different, 
The variance option is allowing us to load balance across these unequal cost paths. And you might wonder, are we trying to send the same amount of traffic over both links? After all, one has a higher metric. Shouldn't we send less across that link? And we do. EIGRP load balances proportionally with the variance option. And there's one other critical aspect of the variance feature that a lot of people miss. I want to make sure that you get it. And that is, in order to load balance across these paths, beyond just having a multiplier, which creates a range encompassing multiple metric values, any additional route that we use has to be a feasible successor route. It has to have passed the feasibility condition. Now, if we take a look at our EIGRP topology table right now, we can see that this route via BB1, even though it doesn't have the lowest metric, it has passed the feasibility condition. And the feasibility condition asks, is the reported distance from a feasible successor less than, not equal to, but is it less than the feasible distance of our successor route? In this case, we're asking, is 2,816, is that less than 3,072? And yes, it is. As a result, this path via BB1 it is a feasible successor. If we had a path that was valid, but the feasibility condition was not met, even though we had the variance multiplier set correctly, we still would not load balance across those paths. Let's prove that. Let's go set the delay on interface gigabit 0 slash 2 back to the way it was. Delay is going to be 1 tens of microseconds, so it's going to be 10 microseconds. Now, if I do a show IP route, we should be load balancing and the paths should have an equal cost. They do. Let's go to BB1 and change the delay there. What we're trying to do is have the reported distance, the distance that BB1 is reporting. We want that reported distance to be equal to or higher than the feasible distance of our successor route via BB2. Then, even though we have the variance set correctly, we're not going to be able to use that backup path. Let's go over to BB1 and let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 2. Remembering that when EIGRP calculates delay, it's cumulative. We're looking at the egress interface delay as we go out of R1, which is the 10 microseconds on gigabit 0 slash 2, but we're also adding on to that the delay associated with leaving a BB1 gigabit 0 slash 2. Now, it's currently 10 microseconds, but we're going to bump it up. We're going to set it to 20 microseconds. I'm going to say delay 2 because the units of measure are in tens of microseconds. Now let's go back to R1. And just a moment ago, we were load balancing. Let's take a look again. Show IP route. Now this time, we're only using one path to get down to that server, and it's via BB2. Well, I've already got the variance set. I wonder what the reported distance is from BB1. Let's do a show IP EIGRP topology command again. And look at this. That backup path that we were load balancing across a moment ago, it's not even appearing in this table. Where is it? What happened to it? Well, it's important to realize that when we look at the topology table, we're only seeing successor and feasible successor routes. There may be another route to get to 198.51.100.0/24, but that other route has failed to meet the feasibility condition. If we want to see that route anyway, what we can do is say, show IP EIGRP topology, all hyphen links. And when we do that, now we see the missing route. It's down here at the bottom. And that's via 203.0.113.1. That's BB1. And we can see that it has failed the feasibility condition. Because the reported distance from BB1 is 3072. And it was not less than. It's equal to, but it's not less than the feasible distance of our successor route of 3,072. So since the reported distance of BB1 was not less than this feasible distance via BB2, the feasibility condition fails. And we still have our variance setting set to 2. So if you take a look at the metric of 3,072 and you multiply it by 2, and we've got that range now of 6,144 all the way down to 3,072, yeah, that does encompass the 3,328, but even though the variance is set correctly, it's still not going to load balance across that path now because that path did not meet the feasibility condition. And that's a look at the variance feature. To sum up, 
The variance feature is unique to EIGRP. It lets us load balance across unequal cost paths. We specify an integer, and that integer is a multiplier. We multiply the variance value by the feasible distance of our successor route, and that creates a range. And if an alternate path has a value that is less than or equal to that multiplier times the feasible distance of our successor route, then that alternate route can be used to load balance across. And we saw that happen, and then we had a route that was not a feasible successor, and we saw that that could not be used with the variance feature. Mm -hmm.